Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to you, Ukraine, Just like I stood in the fire with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, I stand in the fire with you. Just like I stood in the cave with Daniel, with the lions, I stand with you. Just like I stood with Joseph when he was in the pit, I stand with you. And I hear the Lord saying, you, Ukraine, my delicate, delicate sunflower. The sunflower always follow the sun. But in these dark times, I can see in the realm of the spirit, I see the sunflowers following the light, the sun, even in the midst of darkness. The Lord said, I need you to know, yes, I see it all. And I'm with you. Babies are still being born, even in the alley, said the Lord, even in the subway, said the Lord. But I am taking care of them as I would take care of you. Even in trauma, says the Lord, even in the attack, saith the Lord. But I put my hammer down in the spirit. So as nations come together and they begin to pray with you, saith the Lord, the heaven's army will arise and they are arising. For you have even seen angels in the, in the sky letting you know that I am with you, saith the Lord. But I want you to know through it all, saith the Lord, I will raise you back to your place said the Lord and you will be known I will use you to bring revival to every four corners of the earth said the Lord for it is me saith God for I'm doing a great work for I need the nations to continue to pray as the war continues in heaven as it proceeds on earth so do not be moved by what you see for when it's all said and done Ukraine you will have victory and just like I brought victory to Israel said the Lord I will bring Bring is a victory to you, saith the Lord, for I am doing a mighty work. There's none greater than me, for I am that I am, saith the Lord. Give God praise, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You will not be able to understand what you see unless you read the Old Testament. And right now we're in a merging of it where a friend of mine calls it the ancient future. The Bible says the Old Testament is written for our learning. <clears throat> and uh, if all you can see is people die, you won't be able to see anything at all. There's a lot more to this than you think. There are dangers with it, unknowns with it. And uh, you're also getting a small display about what's coming with the Antichrist. God always previews a thing in a smaller form before the big one shows up. You're getting a preview of it. Think about it. The whole world at this moment is held in hostage by one man. One dude got the whole world on hostage. And I know some kind of, you know, you got people that want us to just go and start a war. And I'm in agreement. He has us, right now, that guy is blackmailing. It's a form of blackmail because he's doing what he wants to do with the threat of nuclear weapons. And so the o there's one reason and only one reason only, and, and, and many of the world leaders have said it. I don't know, the president of Finland um, got on TV yesterday and he said it in a news conference. He said, he said, y'all want us to attack? He said, we can't. He said, we can't. You know, they can do something, you know, Russia is hitting them from the air. They can create something called a no-fly zone, NATO, which is an alliance, 30 countries. They can create a no-fly zone. But when you create a no-fly zone, you then have to enforce it. How you create a no-fly zone is you declare nobody can fly through this area. And then you got to put fighter jets up there to patrol it. So that if anybody flies in that no-fly zone, you got to shoot them down. Now you're dealing with dog fights in between the US, Germany, and Russia. And then this is a trigger now, it just escalates. It just escalates, it just escalates. And see, this is how the devil is. He never plays fair, you know? And, and so far, 
the guy has committed multiple what they call war crimes. Even in the midst of war, countries have a rule that they go by, which is, okay, we're fighting, but you know, you ever gotten in an argument with someone and y'all are arguing, arguing, but then they say something and you say, and I see you went too far. Well, in the rules of war, they have rules and, and he's already broken four of them, what are called war crimes. The type of weapons that he's used, cluster bombs, vacuum bombs, those are just, those are crazy bombs. A, a cluster bomb is like strapping a hundred grenades to one missile. And when it hits the ground, they all multiply and just blow up all over the place. He's pretty much using a lot of stuff except for nuclear. And, but that's his thing. He has threatened twice. I'll go nuclear on all y'all. And, and it's not that he would win a nuclear war. It's that these leaders of these countries, they're really in distress right now because they recognize that if we pull this trigger, there's a chance that we go to nuclear war. And now guess what? Now you maybe got 40 Ukrainian situations at the same time. You know? So nobody knows what to do. They got a 40-mile convoy of armored vehicles to go into Ukraine. And every day they say, we can wipe that convoy out in one day, one day, because they're just exposed. It's amazing. A 40-mile convoy of armored vehicles just sitting there because they ran out of gas, vehicles broke down. They'd have been sitting there for days. And you know, these military generals, they just itching. They're like, oh, you got to, this is the greatest scenario I've ever seen. We can just come through there and raise all of those dudes down to the ground. But they won't. <laughs> they won't. Because right now, most of these countries, they're, they're really trying to protect their people. Now, a few are trying to protect their self-interest, but they're like, we're trying to protect the rest of the world from this one guy. So right now, we can't join the fight or we end up fighting. So the only thing we can do is, is everybody's just trying to give Ukraine as much as possible. Here, take our weapons, fight. Here, take our weapons, fight. And that's dangerous because I don't know if the Russian guy might snap and say, okay, you didn't give them too many weapons, so we're going to war. That was interesting. Uh, so that's why you have to pray. There's a wisdom of God that's needed. This is something that must be alleviated by the hand of God. Okay? And then, you know, it's very, very sad because I was telling them this morning, it very much is true that right in the midst of us trying to help them, we're also going by our own wickedness. Most of you may not know this, we were talking about it this morning, is that, and it, this is not me trying to give a thumbs up for Trump. I'm not trying to give him a thousand dollars either, I'm just saying, I'm just making it, it was a clear fact. When Trump was in office, he opened up our oil pipelines so that we would take our reliance off of other countries and because and while he was in office, the United States was the number one producer of oil. Most people have no idea how many reserves we have. Right now, the United States has so much oil, we can supply the whole world, not even blink. But they choose to not do that because of this green energy foolishness where we gotta save the planet from discord because of global warming. There is no such thing as global warming. That is a lie from the pit of hell. These are men who create a side story to use batteries so they can fund their pockets again because you already did it with gas and oil. Now you want to do it with green energy. I don't care nothing about a polar ki uh, ice cap melting. The Bible already tells you how the world is going to end, and it's going to end exactly how God said it's going to end, and it's going to end on the date he said it's going to end and the way he said it's going to end. Not because you use too much gasoline in your lawnmower. And because, they, because they're trying to dupe the people into this green energy deal, they know that if they release our oil reserves, it's a sign that we still need to have it. Elon Musk, the president of Tesla, you know what he said yesterday? He said, we need to let go of the United States oil, even though when you do it, it will damage my company. He said, this is about winning this correctly, not about preserving your special interests. And, un and, and Republicans and Democrats want us to do it. But there's something about Biden. There's a secret that he's keeping. Where as I speak at this moment, we are still buying Russian oil. At this very moment. I think it's 67 million barrels a day. 
And everybody in the world knows all we got to do is stop buying oil from Russia and it'll stop. Nobody wants to do that because they want to protect all of these side contracts they got in the background. And so they don't, I don't care what these guys say on TV. So they have no problem with what they said is coming, which is possibly six to seven dollars a gallon at the pump. They have no problem with inflation because they get paid. You got to pay that. Okay. You think it's a coincidence that now the midterm elections are here, that one side of the party is now trying to pull back. You don't have to wear a mask no more. And, and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Uh, no, you're going to do the same stupid stuff you did for the last. So there's two things that we have to do as the body of Christ. We have to prepare for anything that could happen in the future so that we can keep on going. And we have to set the church up in such a way where it can keep on flying. You know, your boy Billy Graham, <laughs> got that big old jet. <laughs> how many, not Billy Graham, how you know? Billy Graham's son, Franklin Graham. It does not matter what is going on in the planet. He's usually the first one there. The bomb went off at 6, he's there at 601. <laughs> so that's the role of the church is to be involved in the war. Not just saying it's the devil. Because sometimes it's a war between God and the devil that is spoiled over into this realm. I understand it's a whole lot of injustice and a whole lot of stupid stuff and a whole lot of crime, all that type of stuff. Y'all, that's always going to be there. But right in the midst of that, God is doing something. It's just not a coincidence that they keep saying this is David against Goliath. I did not know that the president and the prime minister of Ukraine are both Jewish men. I didn't know that Ukraine has the highest number of evangelical Christians in all of Europe. And they send out more missionaries from that place than any other place. I also didn't know that Ukraine in the past has been one of the most corrupt areas in Europe. Just like Nigeria, you get the best and the worst. So why does this happen? I don't know, they've been free for 30 years. How would you like for somebody, your house is paid off and then a gangster move in the neighborhood and just kicks you out because he wants your house. And all of the people in the neighborhood that can beat him up won't. They just try to sneak you a couple of guns in the midnight hour. And, and that's what's going on. And we don't know why. We don't know why it started. Everybody thinks they're an expert. You're not. I don't know why it started. We know that it comes from darkness. I don't know if it's a prophetic timeline. I, as they're already saying, they said, before this is all done, they said the world has already now changed again. Because the problem with this is the other, e go ahead and sit down, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me turn on this other microphone. Ooh, I sound like deep, Jesus. You can hit those lights for me too. <laughs> so, yeah, you can hit the lights, yeah, thank you. So I'm going to end it by saying this, and that is, we don't know. Scripture has said certain things, and um, um, all of the countries that are supposed to act a fool in the last days are not a part of the NATO alliance. None of them are. And it's very interesting that China will not say anything negative about Russia. As a matter of fact, China knew that Russia was going to do it, so China just asked Russia to do it after the Olympics were over with. Yeah, they knew. They said just, okay, if you're going to do that, just wait. Okay, I'll wait until the Olympics are over with, and then you can do it. And China won't take a stand. You know why? Because China is observing. Let me see how this plays out. Oh, this is how you back off the whole planet and do what you want to do. Russia is the bear, but China is the dragon. So, it's getting deep. I'm personally excited. I have to be totally honest with you. You, all, you, you have to get to a place where nothing moves you. Okay? Worst thing that can happen is, I die. For a second. For a second. Okay? So, but y'all... That is, I want you to, I'm going to end it, but 
I, I just, it's just really, I, I, I sit up in front of TV and I'm just praying. I'm just, just listening to it. It's just so interesting, the different angles and the whole world is on hostage over one man who got some bombs in his backyard that he's threatened to use. And they call it de-escalation through escalation. In other words, I'm going to threaten you and you'll back off. I'm not really going to use it, but they don't know this. The man could be possessed because all of the people that are around him said he changed. Everybody, close to him, they said he just changed into somebody else. It's the exact same thing as Hitler. It's the exact same thing to the T. You know, this one guy comes up with an idea that he just want to kill everybody. So, I don't know. So, uh, huh. So just keep praying, you know, wake up, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm adding water to the fire in Ukraine. It's going to be interesting how it ends, but uh, the uh, people like China and Iran and North Korea, they all watching. Hmm. I think this is how we do it, y'all. So I don't know. It's crazy. So, again, country is free for 30 years. 30 years of freedom. Can you imagine getting up? You got a way of life. You got a family. Your husband goes to work. Okay? You got children. Taking them to school. You got a nice life together. Boom, boom, boom. They told, they, they saw, some people were supposed to graduate from uh, college. Can't now. <laughs> you imagine all of that? And then in one day, your whole life is gone. In one day... You got to put your wife and children on a train to go to another country and you got to stay and fight. The whole country is the military now. The whole country. Women, diplomats, politicians, everybody, businessmen, CEOs, they have all got together. It's an amazing thing to see. A whole country has become the military to fight off this Goliath who just wants to take them over. And it said the worst is yet to come. So I don't know. I don't know if, I'm going to just add this. I don't know. There are, there, are, there are some things that in order for God to bless you, he has to get you to sow a seed first. Okay, so, so you want something. But, but and men of God sometimes have manipulated that. But God will ask you, okay, well, what you're asking for, it requires you to do this. So sow the seed, and then what you're asking for will come to pass. There's a side of this where if Russia is who we think we are in Scripture, and that is the country that the Bible says that God will destroy in one day with the word of his mouth, and he kills this huge army. Um, and so maybe in order to do that, Maybe I need to pull you into something where you sow a seed, where I'm going to, you destroy your crane so I can destroy you. I need you to sow it first. That's how this stuff works. But people don't like that. Well, look at the innocent people. I can't get over into that. Okay. I don't understand all of that. What I do know is when you study the Old Testament and see how God would pull people into war. How many of you know, since you have been reading the Bible every day, for you all that started in the Old Testament, how many of you know, you got your first discourse on God is a gangster. He just, was all of that necessary? And it was crazy. The people of God would get off track. Then God would convince their enemy to attack them and destroy them. And then because they fell for the trick and they destroyed them, then he destroyed their enemy because he destroyed them. I'm like, what is that? It's the Lord pulling people into stuff. There's some things that can't happen in planet Earth, like in order for me to kill my only son, I got to get Abraham to kill his. You understand? And, and so, you know, let them, by the Christ, let alone the planet, is very ignorant to these things. And so they don't understand how the Lord does a thing. And, and, and we don't like how he does a thing because we would never do it that way. But think about that. I can do it, but I got to get somebody else to do it first. In planet Earth. So if Abraham can kill his only son, that's why, you know, how many know Abraham was getting ready to go through with it? 
And the Bible says that Abraham was, I didn't even plan on teaching this. The Bible said that Abraham was going to do it and kill his only son because he had already made up in his mind that God was going to raise his son from the dead. So if I can get a man that will kill his son and believe that he can be raised from the dead, then surely I can go ahead and do it because somebody already sold it first. So maybe in order to destroy Russia, I got to get you to sow a seed of destroying somebody else. Then I'm going to stop it because your mind was already made up. And then I'm going to reverse it and destroy you. And then Bible will come to pass. And then we all come by in heaven and we can watch the movie. You understand what I'm saying? That's how that stuff works. So you have to ask God a question and say, Lord, start showing me. Start showing me. Start showing me. <laughs> so I'm trying not to go a particular direction, but y'all got that. So you have to look at these different avenues, but it's a great possibility that it's that, that is that. So how many know? We'll see. Keep the news on. Keep your prayer going. Live your life like the last day is tomorrow, and then live your life like you're going to be around for a while. You know, but, but you got to prepare yourself, you all, because world events now will affect our world. It's, it's, it's still this thing with California. There are entirely too many prophecies about what is going to happen in California. And let me say something. It's just a strange thing because, you know, you... There is a great word church in the Ukraine. My previous pastor has preached there. That's a great word church. But when God getting ready to do a thing, everybody got to move out of the way. <laughs> everybody. You just want to make sure that you're right. Because when God is fed up, you, 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 you better have had something built up in the spirit. You better know how to hear from God. I can guarantee you there's some folk that were in Ukraine. They got it one day. Why do I feel like the Lord is telling me to move to Poland? You know what? This might be a good time to see if we can get into the U.S. See, this. let's check out them visas. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Many a times the judgment that comes against the body of Christ in these atmospheres is you didn't meditate the word day and night. You didn't spend time in prayer. You didn't live clean. So because you didn't do that, you didn't hear the rescue plan. And what you didn't hear is the judgment against you because you didn't do these parts right here. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Thank you. Ouch, brother. Mark. Ouch. That hurts, but that's the truth. And I'm not saying that's what it is. It's just that these are the things that I see. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will show you different avenues without telling you which one it is. Because it could be all of them. You understand what I'm saying? All right. It's serious, y'all. Stay close. Don't be out here nilly-willy just trying to be your own island. You're going to be the first one taken out. Remember that story in the scripture? Of the five virgins that were wise and the five virgins that were unwise? Okay. And, and when the unwise... Had realized they had messed up. They tried to beg for the provisions from the wise. It's a reason why they were wise. They didn't give up them provisions. This ain't the time for me to share donuts with you. <laughs> Romans 14, 17. The kingdom of God is not a matter of what we, what we eat or drink, but of living life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay? Kingdom of God. It's not a matter of what we eat or drink. Now, that don't mean you should be eating everything. It doesn't mean you should be drinking everything. But the kingdom of God is not based on that type of stuff. The kingdom of God is based on living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost or the things that produce that. If you serve Christ with this attitude, you will please God and others will approve of you also. So you know that we're going through the nine fruit of the spirit. This month, we're going to open it up with peace. And the moment I said I was going to do peace, Holy Spirit clapped back and said, do the first two sessions on hell. I was like, what? <coughs> Isaiah 48, 18. All that you had listened to my commands, then you would have peace flowing like a gentle river. 
and the righteousness roaring, rolling over you like waves in the sea. Think about that. Oh, I wish you had to listen to me. You would have wonderful peace right now. And the reason why he wanted me to do, you know, you do different aspects. But Isaiah 57, 21, it says, there is no peace for the wicked, says my God. And that this is a very sobering fact. How many of you know every person that dies on television, you know, whatever in the community, somebody you work with, family, what do we say? Rest in peace. Impossible if you're not saved. Quit just doing that little thing over people that you don't know. Rest in peace. Or not a new one is rest in heaven. You don't have a bed there if you're not up there. You know. And so, how many been to church service and, and they want to put somebody in heaven? You know, he gave his life to Christ at an early age. And then the angel sits there at the funeral. And then for the rest of his life, he gave it to the devil. But people are trying to convince themselves that you can get into this place on your own terms. And you can't. You can't even get the sandwich the way you want to at Burger King. And they said you can have it your way. <laughs> well, I don't want to pay. Well, you can't have it that way. Well, then stop saying what you say. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I mean, we do this in the world, but then when it comes to heavenly things, the most important, oh, I can just do what I want to do. God is going to change his mind. Okay, I'll keep that in now. I'm not that dumb. Let me tell you something. If God is mean, if he is judgmental, if he is crazy, if he is a God that just looks for a reason to beat people up aside the head, I don't have a problem with that as long as I can get in. <laughs> I'm, not going, I'm not going to that. Not that. I'm not going to hell. How many with me on that one? <laughs> when two rocket ships pull up, I'm going to say, which one is going up and which one is going down? Just the one right there. Okay, I'm getting on that one. Be the first in line. I will move you out the way to get on and get in line. <laughs> this ain't the time for ladies first. I'm getting in. <laughs> I'm going to pay for that one. I'm going to pay for that one. Somebody going to send me a letter or email. I'm getting in. No, I'm not doing that. Revelation 20, 11. I saw a great right throne and one sitting on it. The earth and sky fled from his presence, found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were open. Books, not just one. Many books, including the book of life. So there's several books written about your life. One is the book of life. That is the one book that is probably the most beautiful and awesome book in all of the universe because that book has the names of the redeemed in it. It has the names of those who accepted what Jesus did. That's the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead and death and the grave gave up their dead and all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Hey, now, let me say something. You don't have to be scared, as they say. <clears throat> or a better way of saying it, you don't have to be afraid. Um, <clears throat> but Jesus did talk about the subject of hell more than any other person in the Bible. I think I said that incorrectly Wednesday. I said that. Jesus talked about the subject of hell more than any other subject. That's not true. He talked about hell more than any other person in the Bible, maybe because they were scared to talk about it. Most, uh, very rarely do I meet a pastor that, that wants to teach on hell because they know people get offended and people get scared. People will walk out on you. It doesn't matter if you walk out. What we preach is still true. You know what I'm saying? You just choose not to hear it, but you'll be faced to deal with it in the future with a greater level of judgment. So here's a book. Um, I think I gave him that book. Take a picture of it for the purposes of the media. It says, A Land Unknown, Hell's Dominion by B.W. Melvin. <clears throat> Should have got the brighter one, but it's A Land Unknown, Hell's Dominion 
by B.W. Melvin. I'll talk more about that and the lessons that I learned from that book. Because today I'm just going to introduce you to it. Um, next week, maybe Wednesday night, next weekend we'll get over into why does it last forever? Next weekend, that's the only question I'm going to ask. Because people are like, okay, that's fine. Hell exists. But why does it have to last forever? When you hear the answers, you're going to be like, oh, wow. Hey, <laughs> okay. But I'm just going to kind of tell you because what I think I realize is that most people don't really know about that world. Because one, they're afraid of it. They don't like to read about it. They don't like to study it. And, uh, and then many people have used it as a, uh, you ever been to a church and seem like that preacher wants you to go to hell? <laughs> Every week they send you to hell, then they get you saved, then they send you to hell the next Sunday. You know, but Ezekiel 32, 18 says, Son of man, weep for the hordes of Egypt and for the other mighty nations, for I will send them down to the world below in company with those who descend to the pit. Okay, so I'm going to explain some things. Oh. Science will not agree because science is stupid. And I, I, I say that gladly. Just because you've got a degree doesn't mean you're smart. You know, some of the smartest people are street folk. You have somebody that got a PhD? The world is going to end in, politicians, the world is going to end in three years if we don't switch to green energy. Go talk to the homeless community. Bruh, the world is not getting ready to end because we don't just eat tomatoes. You know what I'm saying? They just, no, it's stupid. Street people got a lot of sense. Street people can see a false preacher before Holy Ghost people can see a false preacher. <laughs> they walk in the door. Nope. Nope. He said, gang, recognize gang. Thank you. No, he ain't right. No, he's not. I'm telling you not right. But you haven't even heard what he said. I don't have to hear what he said. I can just tell he's not right. Okay? But anyway, so there are three worlds. <clears throat> three. And I'm going to just for a moment, and this will be very short because I know when it comes to hell, I don't want to get too graphic on you. But there are three worlds. Okay? Number one is the one that we live in, planet Earth. And when I say three worlds, I'm not talking about when it comes to this first world. It's planet Earth and other planets like it. Okay, so it would include Pluto and Saturn and all the other ones out there that they have named. Um, but the first world um, has both forces in it. The other two don't. The other two only have one force. This is the only world that has both. It has both light and dark. So I have a graphic up here, I think, that they can put. So planet Earth has the scientific properties or the force of light and darkness. You will find that everything in life, visible and is invisible, every single thing fits in those two categories. There is no gray area. It either fits in light or it fits in darkness. Righteousness, light. Wickedness, darkness. Holiness, light. Sin, darkness. Prosperity, light. Poverty, darkness. Healing, light. Sickness, darkness. Love, light. Hate, darkness. Joy, light. Depression, darkness. Hmm. Peace, in the category of light. Discord, in the category of darkness. Wisdom, category of light. Confusion, category of darkness. Y'all got that? So in planet Earth... We are the only world that has both forces in it, naturally, scientifically, spiritually, materially, whatever it is. I know that's not a word, I don't think, but it doesn't matter because my mind is gone in the future. But you see both of those forces, okay? And then with those forces, um, when you get to the basic properties of light and darkness, um, uh, light easily overcomes darkness, okay? The Bible says that God created um, the sun and the moon to rule the night. Rule it. Prosperity rules poverty. Health is supposed to rule sickness. Love is supposed to rule hatred. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So that's the first world. It, only, it has light and it has darkness. Not, necess not necessarily in this order uh, of importance, but now the second world is heaven. Heaven is a world that has only light and unapproachable light. 
1 Timothy 6.16. He alone can never die. He lives in light so brilliant that no human can approach him. <laughs> no human eye has ever seen him, nor ever will. That's crazy. All honor and power to him forever. Now someone will ask the question, what about the people who said they've been to heaven and they met Jesus? They met the form he wanted to appear to them in. When you study Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, read all of the scriptures that have to do with Jesus after he got up from the dead. Mary thought he was the gardener. Two men walked with Jesus for a whole day down the road and didn't even know it was him, even though he was preaching. And then another scripture says that after Jesus got up from the dead, he kept on appearing in a different form to people. So guess what? Maybe most of you, possibly all of you, have already ran into the man on the street. You just didn't know it. That's one thing about the spiritual realm. that has the ability to change form. Be careful how you entertain strangers. Because many times, not every once in a while, many times you entertained an angel and did not know it. Why? Everybody up there has the ability to change form. Be truth be told, some of you might have ran into him as an animal. I'm getting too deep for y'all now. It's going to freak you out when you're in heaven and Jesus is talking to you and then turns into an eagle the size of this building and it flies off. You were like, wait a minute, they didn't tell me this in Bible school. This is, I just found out yesterday, you have, one, you have angels up there that have one face. And then I found out that you have angels up there that have two faces. I didn't realize that. And guess what the two faces are? That of a man and that of a lion. And then there are angels up there that have four faces. It says, like a man, the other one was a lion, the other one was an eagle, and the other one was an ox. Okay? And always you know, whenever the Bible uses an ox, it always represents opulence and prosperity. It's a reason why there's one, a statue of one sitting in front of Wall Street. It's the reason why when prosperity goes up, they call it bullish. And when it goes down, it's called bearish. It's a reason for that. God is always using animals to show you the nature of a thing. Y'all with me? Yeah, yeah. Hey? So no one has ever seen him, how he actually is, because you would die if you did. 1 John 1, 5, this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light. He didn't just produce it. He is light. And there is no darkness in him at all. So we live in the first world, which has light and darkness. They live in the world that only has one light, no darkness in any single area whatsoever. James 1.17, every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect, streaming down from the Father of lights, who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow or darkness and is never subject to change. So in heaven, not only is God is light, there is no darkness, there are even no shadows. So the light in heaven, the Bible says, is seven times brighter than the noonday sun. That might be the first level. And there is no shadow there. So also that means that light has taken up on a different nature in heaven. It exists there, but has a different nature. James 1.17. I just read that, didn't I? Psalm 105, 1 through 4. Everything I am will praise and bless the Lord. O oh Lord, my God, your greatness takes my breath away, overwhelming me by your majesty, beauty, and splendor. You wrap yourself with a shimmering, glistening light. You wear sunshine like a garment of glory. You stretch out the starry skies like a tapestry. You build your balconies with light beams and ride as a king in a chariot you made from clouds. You fly upon the wings of the wind and you make your messengers into winds of the spirit and all of your ministers become flames of fire. When you go to heaven, you're going to be freaked out. You're going to be like, wait a minute. Jesus is going to be talking to you. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why is he on fire? That's his clothes. He's not on fire. <laughs> God making his chariots. <laughs> You just try to get a car. God making cars out of, cl out of, cars out of clouds. It's crazy. <laughs> but it said he's wrapped himself in light. Y'all still with me? 
Revelation 21, 22. I saw no, I got to explain the other two worlds before I get to the third one. I saw no temple in the city for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city has no need of sun or moon for the glory of God illuminates the city and the Lamb is its light. Well, no wonder you, can, you can't approach them. I'm just trying to figure out what type of being are you where heaven makes planet earth look like a speck of dust. There are no suns there. There are no moons there because one individual is the light. And the one individual is so bright that there's no darkness up there and no shadows. You can miss heaven if you want to. I told you about it. when that train pulls up, uh, which one is going right and which one is going left. That's the other question. When something pulls up, what's going up? Okay, I'm getting on that one. And then when a vehicle pulls up, are you going right, which is the good side, or are you going left? You see that in Scripture. He said, I'm going to put the lambs on the right and the goats on the left. He's all, I mean, it's amazing what God uses. Hmm. The nations will walk in its light, and the kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed at the end of the day because there is no night there. And all the nations will bring their glory and honor into the city. Nothing evil will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry, dishonesty, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. How many know that your name is in that book? There's one thing I need to make sure that my name is in that book. I don't need no angels making a mistake. I don't need y'all misspelling my name. I don't need... <laughs> this is how I talk to myself. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 through 8. For you are all children of the light. I'm going to have a t-shirt made that says, don't you make it. I need it. This one got to be ultra cool. <laughs> Son of light. What a big, never mind. For you are all children of the light and of the day. We don't belong to darkness and night. So be on your guard, not asleep like the others. Stay alert and be clear headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us live in the light. Let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. Romans 13, 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So this also lets you know that that armor that the Bible talks about the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. What else? The, the shoes that you wear, the belt that you gird yourself with, the sword of the spirit, and it talks about the shield of faith. Well, these are actually things you can put on and take off, but if you see them, they're all made out of light. So God is light. He said, you are children of light. He said, my clothes are made out of light and my weapons are made out of light. No darkness whatsoever. And nothing in the category of night is up there. Y'all got me. Revelation twenty two fourteen. Blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. When it says wash their robes, it means you got saved, but you were still crazy doing drugs, smoking weed, cussing, and sleeping around. But you begin to wash your robes. You begin to clean yourself up. Y'all got that? How many plan on being cleaner next week than you were last week? Trying to be ultimate clean. I don't need nothing. Amen. <laughs> They'll be permitted to eat of the tree of life. Outside the city, though, are dogs, sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie. I told you you were supposed to be saved. You rejected that. And because you rejected that, you lived a lie. I told you to live right. You said it ain't that deep. So you lived a lie. <laughs> anyway, so y'all got that. First world has both forces. Second world called heaven has only light. Now let's look at the world that only has darkness and no light. I love the Bible, just how it puts things together. Matthew 8, 11 through 12. Everybody say, here we go. Hold on. You know when that roller coaster ride it goes up, 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 and you're already screaming. The thing ain't even moved yet. You're just holding on. Ah, why did I do this? Ah! Too late now. 
We're going down. <laughs> and I'll tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east and west, sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. But many Israelites, those for whom the kingdom was prepared, will be thrown into outer darkness, not regular darkness, outer darkness. Because regular darkness can still have light in it. Outer darkness can't. Where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When it says gnashing of teeth, any of you ever hit your elbow, you, you do that because you're in pain. It says this is a place where there is no light, <laughs> physical light, scientific light, whatever you want to call it. And there is no spiritual light. So all of those things that were in the category of light, prosperity, not there. Healing, not there. So everybody is broken, sick. Love, not there. Everybody hates each other. No peace. Everybody's arguing with yourself because you're not around people. It is the perfect place of ultimate insanity. And not because God is doing it. It's because he left. Judge one twelve, Jude one twelve. When these people eat with you in your fellowship meals commemorating the Lord's love, they are like dangerous reefs that can shipwreck you. That's why you need to judge who is around you right now. They are like shameless shepherds who care only for themselves. They are like clouds blowing over the land without giving any rain. God knows how to give a description of somebody, doesn't he? They are like trees in autumn that are doubly dead, for they bear no fruit and have been pulled up by the roots. They are like wild waves of the sea, churning up the foam of their shameful deeds. They are like wandering stars, doomed forever to the blackest of darkness. Y'all got that? So, heaven and earth has both forces. Heaven only has light, no darkness. Hell only has darkness and no light. Second Peter 2.4 for God did not spare even the angels who sinned. He threw them into hell and in gloomy part pits of darkness where they are being held until the day of judgment. So right now on the planet Earth, there's a group of angels. We don't know how many. And for some reason, what they did, he said, either he said, I'm not going to let you fight against my children or I don't want my children to fight you or I'm just going to lock you up. And then they're, they're, they're in, this, they're in an, uh, what you call the uh, bottomless pit. They're not just free falling constantly. The Bible talks about how um, Satan will be brought to the sides of the pit. You're in a pit and you're just stuck to the side of it. Just like this. <laughs> 6,000 years, you're just laying there, sitting there, stuck up next to a pit. Just like this, just sitting there. You realize how insane you would go? Can you imagine the type of imaginations you would create and the type of worlds that you would create in your own mind when you're stuck in a pit and you can't see nothing but blackness for 6,000 years? That's this group of angels down there right now. Every once in a while people say that they ran into the angels drilling. You ain't running into no angel in the underworld because you were drilling for oil. Whatever. And we stuck a microphone down there and we heard screaming, <sighs> and then they still don't get saved. Which lets me know you didn't experience nothing. Whatever. Matthew 13, 47. Y'all still with me? Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. When the net was full, <laughs> that's the end of the world, they dragged it up onto the shore, sat down, and sorted the good fish into crates, but threw the bad ones away. That is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous, throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So now we know that not only is this place the darkest of all black, you can't see nothing, there is no prosperity there whatsoever, we also know that it's a furnace. Okay? Fiery furnace. Matthew 25, 41. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with me, you cursed ones, and to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. Now here we need to stop for a second because you see two things. Number one, you see a fire that can never, ever be quenched. And the second thing you see is the 
first reason why hell was created, the ultimate reason, is that it was never created for humans. Hell was created for the devil and his army. It says that. It says it was created. Also lets you know. <laughs> See, people keep arguing with me about, well, the Lord doesn't give these crazy. I'm having crazy dreams and, 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 and you know, it's horrific and, and it's a nightmare. And, and you put God in a box. Because there is no greater nightmare than somebody creating hell. See, we put God in a box. When you have these nightmares, it's generally showing you that you're doing something that you have no business doing. Because let me tell you something, your good works are much greater in that realm. And your sins are much greater in that realm. When you see how God describes, describes sin, you're appalled by it. But when you do it, you think it's okay. But when God describes it, it can be so nasty and horrific with how he describes the thing. I mean, it's just, it's, it's scrum, some scriptures have made me very squirmish in regards to, I mean, watch this. God says that if you just stop worshiping me and you go with another religion, he said you committed adultery. Well, that's a strong statement. You know, and he said if you go to the world, you committed adultery. It's much more graphic. You understand what I'm saying? All right. So it's been created for the devil and his angels. A real cry in this Catholic Baptist church, but understand. Luke 16, 19. It's not long. Luke 16, 19. Jesus said there was a certain rich man. This is a true story. Particularly when you read in the New Living Translation in King James when it says there was a certain man, it was a real story. Um, if he just says there was a man, he could be teaching a parable. But if he says there was a certain man, he's talking about a real incident. There was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen and who lived each day in luxury. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus who was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. That's nasty. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. The rich man also died and was buried. And he went to the place of the dead. That's another place. Name for hell is the place of the dead. And there in torment, he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus as it, at his side. So as you know, you still have the ability to see. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Now look at the attitude of the rich man. He still got this mentality to look down on poor people. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said to him, son, remember that during your lifetime, you had everything you wanted and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is here being comforted and you are in anguish. Now people will first lose that. See, rich people can't go to heaven. Let's keep on reading. Because the rich man will tell you why he's in hell. And besides, there's a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from there. Then the rich man said, please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home. <laughs> send a slave. Don't send nobody. Don't send no preachers, no angels. Send a slave. For I have five brothers, and I want them, and I want him to warn them so they don't end up in this place of torment. Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. The preachers have warned them. The prophets have warned them. The evangelists have warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. They got a Bible. Right. Right. Hmm. The rich man said, no, Father Abraham. If someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent of their sins and turn to God. Abraham said, no, they won't. They won't listen to the preachers and Moses and the prophets and the word. They won't be persuaded even if somebody raises, rises from the dead. So the rich man told you why he was in hell. His family had a mentality of rejecting the truth. That's why he said, send them to my brothers. <laughs> he said, they got a Bible? The same, you know what I'm saying, they didn't have a Bible right there. He said, they got the law, they have the word, they got the prophets, and they got Moses' teachings. He said, no, we don't listen to that. We're not into that. And I know that they had the same mentality as me, so I know they're not, they're not gonna listen to the preachers, they're not gonna listen to the word, they're not gonna listen to Moses. Maybe they might listen to science. Because somebody, y'all follow me. He said, no. He said, 
said, they ain't going to listen to that. They ain't going to listen to the other, even though it's a supernatural scientific event that he got raised from the dead. They're not going to do that. How many know if you died for a few days and you came back to life, they're going to do some experimentation on you. Matthew 25, 45. <laughs> I just got a few more. I'm just opening it up to give you a small description. We'll get into the details next week. And next weekend is going to blow your mind. Because it blew mine. And if you read the book, you'll start getting the answers when you read the book. I'll probably talk about the book a little bit at the end so that you'll read it. Matthew 7, 13. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell. Y'all remember that song? Highway to hell. <laughs> it's a terrible song, but it sounds good. I sing it every once in a while, even though I'm not going there. <laughs> Made me lose my place acting silly. He said, the highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. For the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult. It's not always going to be easy. And only a few ever find it. That's a terrible statement. Only as bright as light is, only a few people find that path. You can see light more than you can see darkness. They'll see it, but they won't follow it. They'll choose the dark path that they can't see where it's going to lead. And he said, most are going to follow the darkness instead of following the light. How many? Never mind. If I'm in the middle of a forest called the wilderness, which is the world, and I see two portals open up in front of me, and the one to the left looks like a black hole, and the one to the right looks like a beautiful light, how many of you know I'm going right? That's how it looks to God. No, nope, you decided to follow the black hole. Everybody say, I'm going up. Mark 9, 43, and these next two are a little gross. If your hand, now, but it's an instruction. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better to enter eternal life with only one hand than to go to hell with both. Where the fire is unquenchable. Watch this. The fire, there is nothing in the universe. There's nothing in heaven that can put that fire out. It can't be quenched. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better to you to enter life with one foot and a cane than to be thrown into hell with two feet. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. It's better to enter the kingdom of God with only one eye <laughs> than you can see clearly in hell. Y'all following me? Where the maggots never die and the fire never goes out. I'm not going to a place where there are no maggots. I don't even like taking out the trash and I see maggots around the trash can, you know what I'm saying? I don't fool with no maggots, okay? There were a couple of times I didn't, never mind, I don't want to put that in your head. Uh, that's one thing I don't fool with. That's beyond disgusting. Isaiah 14, 9, this is even worse. Uh, this is, God is getting ready to share with, with you a little bit about Satan's bedroom. And the place of the dead, hmm, you got to go read the whole thing. He was actually, well, um, it's a general statement, but it's also talking about Satan. But in the place of the dead, there is excitement over your arrival. The spirits of world leaders and mighty kings long dead stand up to see you. With one voice, they will all cry out. Now you, as, uh, you are as weak as we are. Your might and power were buried with you. The sound of your harp and your palace has ceased. Now maggots are your bedsheets and worms are your blanket. Now that is a literal statement. People that have been caught down to hell they said that is literally the case. They said you are laying down and your sheet is a sheet of maggots. I'm not going to a place like that. 
I don't even want to hear about a place like that. I'm appalled that even Jesus put it in Scripture. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> but Jesus loves you enough to make you squirmish. You know what I'm saying? He said that's worse than squirmish. I understand. So, before I read this very, very last scripture, I have two graphics. Put up the first one. Why is hell so horrific? Simple. God is not there, neither are any of his attributes. Most of the terrible things in hell are not experienced because of his wrath, but because of his absence. You forgot about him, so he simply forgot about you. And there's the deep part. When he does that, he's giving you respect. You said you didn't want him. I have to respect your wishes then. And I got to put you in a place where I am not. And the problem is, is that if I'm not there, everything that I created is not there. Because I said every good and perfect gift comes from where? Above. And you decided to go below. And I'm a gentleman. So I respect you enough to send you to a place where you said you wanted to go. Because you said you didn't want to have anything to do with me. Well, I didn't know it was that deep. It's not my problem. I just respect your wishes. You knew it was that deep in your heart. You just thought you could get away with it. Next graphic. Just as prisons have been constructed to protect the innocent from those who break natural law, hell has been prepared to protect the innocent from those who break spiritual law. And that's the side I'm going to get into next weekend, is that you feel bad for the people that go to hell, and God will show you something. He said, you didn't know that they were eternal criminals. He said, you didn't know that if I let them in this place called heaven, they're going to do something similar to Satan and mess you up. Because you're just looking at the moment. I'm looking at the heart, which is eternal. Because out of the heart flows the issues of life. So all you can see is they seem like a nice person. And, and I'm telling you that if we let them come up here, and I can't change them unless they let me, and they wouldn't let me change them. So I got to leave them the way they are out of respect for their wishes. But if I let them up here because you want me to bring them up here and be a God of ultimate love, which I am, he said I bring them up here. He said they come up here with the same mentality. And watch this. A million years from now, create a rebellion like the other dude did. Because that mentality left unchecked will always produce problems for everyone else. Watch this. The Bible says that one out of every three angels rebelled with Satan, which means they would not have rebelled if it wasn't for the one dude. You got a whole army fighting a war. Why? Because Putin decided to do something wicked. And you have a whole bunch of people that join him because most people are going to follow the leader. So I guess into a little bit of next weekend. We'll read the last scripture. Ezekiel 33, 10 through 20. Son of man, give the people of Israel this message. You are saying our sins are heavy upon us. We are wasting away. How can we survive? As surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. It's real important for you to remember. God takes no pleasure in one person going to hell. He said, I wish that all men would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, which means you can be saved but have no knowledge of the truth concerning salvation. That's why I don't get too shaky with men that have accepted the Lord and maybe are part of churches that have erroneous doctrine. You don't get into heaven because of doctrine. You get into heaven because of Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? So I personally believe that there will be some Jehovah Witnesses in heaven. I personally believe that there will be some Mormons in heaven if they accepted the Lord. Because you don't go to heaven based on doctrine. You go to heaven based on one decision. Y'all follow me? So be careful how you judge people because there's some people that got the good doctrine and they ain't going nowhere. As surely as I live, in verse 11, says the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to turn from their wicked ways so that they can live. Turn, turn from your wickedness, O people of Israel. Why should you die? Son of man, give your people this message. 
<laughs> the righteous behavior of righteous people will not save them if they turn to sin, nor will the wicked behavior of wicked people destroy them if they repent and turn from their sins. When I tell righteous people that they will live, but then they sin, expecting their past righteousness to save them, then none of their righteous acts will be remembered. I will destroy them for their sins. And suppose I tell some wicked people that they will surely die, but then they turn from their sins and do what is just and right. For instance, they might give back a debtor security, returning or return what they have stolen and obey my life-giving laws, no longer doing what is evil. If they do this, then they will surely live and not die. None of their past sins will be brought up again. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. For they have done what is just and right, and they will surely live. But your people are saying, the Lord isn't doing what's right. But it is they who are not doing what's right. For again, I say, when righteous people turn away from their righteous behavior and turn to evil, you will die. But if wicked people turn from their wickedness and do what is just and right, they will live. O people of Israel, you are saying the Lord isn't doing what's right, but I judge each of you according to your own personal deeds. In other words, everybody always trying to counsel God because of your common sense. And God is perfect. Okay? So it's a real place. And I know I personally don't like it. I don't. I don't like the fact that hell is created. I don't like the fact that people have to go there. I don't have, but there are lots of things that I have learned over the years. Like, we usually fall in love with the exterior of a person, but don't know the real individual. Some of the most wicked looking people are very righteous. And some of the most, in, you know what? How many, be honest with you. Putin does not look like a bad guy. He just looks like somebody that would be like your nice grandfather, and he seems to be mild and even-tempered, and he, 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 you know, he walks you know, just slowly and carefully, and his voice is very low, and he doesn't raise his voice. You know, he don't look like somebody like Osama bin Laden in the cave looking crazy and had a biscuit in two minutes. You know what I'm saying? He just, he doesn't look, now Hitler looked crazy, me personally. Hitler looked crazy, okay? But you know, there's some people that they look crazy and some people don't has nothing to do with anything. It has nothing to do with the fact that Putin seems like a nice man. His heart is wicked. And so we make judgments about things and don't assume that people you think went to hell did. One of the most wonderful stories that I heard from a nurse, she said she had a patient, and this was an atheist man who was very, very vile, vulgar, crude, rude, all the other synonyms that go with that. And the man was slowly dying, slowly dying. She had to come take care of him. And he was at the point where it was guaranteed that this man was getting ready to, he was on hospice, he was getting ready to die in the next two days or so, one or two days. She says she remember her last visit, and she says she, you know, she was responsible for taking him out. She had him in the wheelchair. He's just sitting there, and, and, and so she took him out to the balcony at this nursing home. And she said there was a picture on the wall. And she said that uh, the picture was of Jesus um, knocking on the door, okay? And, you know, I, it wasn't doing that. You know what I'm saying? It was a picture of him knocking on the door. So she said the man with a cigarette in his mouth just looked at the picture. He said, what does that mean? She said, oh, well, it's a picture, you know, that, of, of Jesus, and it represents that Jesus is trying to knock on the door of your heart so that you can let him in. His reply was, well, what if I don't believe that? She says, well, what I suggest is, is that when I take you back to your bedroom, that uh, you just talk to God and be honest with him and say, I don't believe that for whatever reason, but could you make yourself real to me, plain to me so that I can believe? That was the only instruction that she gave him. She took him back to his bedroom. He was dead the next day. She doesn't know what he did. What she does know is that she went to the front desk and asked the ladies about the painting that was on the balcony. And they said, what painting? She said, the painting on the back balcony. They said, show us. She said, there was no painting there. No nails even in the walls. Just paint. Because God in his mercy 
was willing to make something show up that was not there to give a man one last chance. Some of you have relatives that you think are in hell, but they're not because you weren't there at that last moment. God will never force a person to make a decision. He can't. He will not force you. You got to make the decision. You have free will. It's one of the things I'm going to talk about next weekend is God was, God was judging this man who was judging him. He said, you're judging me. He said, but you don't even know how I made men. He said, I made them just like me to have their own reasoning and their own wisdom to make their own decisions. I made you like me, and nobody will force me to make a decision. Therefore, no one will force my children to make one. You have to make the decision. It was God who made a decision to not destroy us all, but to destroy his son for us. He made that decision. Nobody asked him to even do that. You understand what I'm saying? And so we don't know if the man accepted or not, but you sometimes are not there for that last moment. You're just not. And just like the man that was on the cross next to Jesus, he had messed up all the way to his last second. He didn't even ask Jesus to forgive him. He just said, would you? They're looking for any reason they can to get you up there. The man just said, would you remember me? He didn't say, would you take me up there? Would you just remember me? And you heard the words, but God saw his heart. He knew what the men meant. He knew that the man was truly sorry for the fact that he had acted a fool his entire life and didn't think that he was worthy to go to the place Jesus was going. Would you just remember me? Because I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going to happen. And then what did Jesus say? I see your heart, not your words, not your little squeaky, squeaky clean prayer. I see your heart. Therefore, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Take the man straight to heaven. So, but this, this religious culture out here with some denominations, they make it seem like God is just, he's just watching you all day long, hoping that you'll make a mistake so he can swing his heavenly bat across your head and make you sick. And he's looking for a reason. I just, I want everybody to go to hell. That's how they teach this. And God is sitting up here doing all type of stuff to prevent anybody from going. And so that's when people stand before the Lord, they definitely will be out of excuse. Because they say, you remember when I showed you that picture? Watch this. You remember when I made that angel show up in your hospital room? You remember the stranger that you ran into? It'll be a long laundry list. And God will fight. God will fight for the people who reject him to the last breath they breathe. That's crazy. So it's a horrific place. It's a terrible place. The men that God allowed to experience it said that their mind tried to snap for many months after that experience because they said it's a very, very psychotic place. You know, the lawyer, you know, the real estate guy that wrote the book 23 Minutes in Hell, you know, he talked about his experience and his was a little bit more graphic. That book is graphic, but it's different. Um, but his was a little bit, I'm about to close in a second. His, no, um, his was a little bit more graphic. I mean, he said, imagine a place, he said, where every, everything that's in the category of light is not there. He said, so there's no air there. And because there's no air there, <laughs> he said, you're always in the process of suffocating. Mm -hmm. So he said, Imagine that forever. He said, because you can't breathe, but you can't die. <laughs> yeah, while I'm being tormented. He said, and then he said, he said, in the midst of all of this heat, guess what you are? You're a thousand times over thirsty, but there's no water there. He said, so now you're just dehydrated. And because you're, you know, if you, if you become dehydrated, you start getting weaker each day. He said, imagine being de dehydrated for a million years. You're in this constant state of hunger, but you can't eat because there's no food. Constant state of thirst, but there's no water. You need to breathe, but you're always choking because there's no air. He said, and then he said, the smell down there is horrific. He said, uh, he, this is what he quoted. He said, take animal feces and urine, decomposed human body, spoiled milk and rotted food. 
Mix that up in a bowl and then multiply it times a thousand and you might come close to the smell. And people are like, God is so horrific. No, he just respects you and left. And in that void, that's what is left. And that's what you wanted. Jesus said, I came to save you. I'm good. Oh, okay. I'll come back tomorrow. I came to save you. I told you I'm good. Okay. I'm going to send your grandmother. You need to get saved. I'm good. Okay. You're going to flip through the channels at 1 o'clock in the morning while you're drunk, and you're going to come across a preacher. You need to get saved. I'm good. And that, that's the testimony of people. They just don't tell you because they're your relatives. Because you've been preaching to them, but they don't want to hear from you. That's why for most of you, pray for your relatives every day. You're probably not going to be the one that gets them saved. Because when they think about it, they don't want to hear from you because they were already fighting you. It'll be a stranger that'll get them saved. And then when they get saved, they want to come back and teach you. Hey, so, so don't assume. And just remember this. I, I'm going to just say this. I didn't plan on saying none of this. There's some of you that uh, you might wonder about some of your family members. All you can do is just hope for the best and live your life. Because the truth be told, the whole planet is your family. The Bible says we are one. Okay. Do you realize they call me African American after the flesh? So that's fine. That's not what God calls me, but that's what men call me. So I'm not about to start marching. I'm not African American. I'm not African American. I'm not. I'm not going to do all that. It's not that deep. That's what they call me after the flesh. But the truth be told, if there are members of my family that are not saved, and there's somebody over in that Ukrainian army that is, the Ukrainian guy is more my brother than the person that looks like me from my own blood family. What is blood? Yeah, but you forgot something. There is a blood that changed you. And when you accepted that blood, your DNA changed, and I became a new creature. And I became a new creature, which means, unfortunately, my family members are no longer my family members. <laughs> da 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 That's how heaven looks at it. Okay? So you're going to gain some family members you never met. Some of us might lose some family members that we grew up with. What the scripture does promise is that God is going to wipe away all tears from your eyes. You will understand everything on the other side. Because right now, I don't understand that. I don't understand that forever thing. I don't understand that alpha or omega thing. I don't understand that you never had a beginning and you never had an end thing. I never understand that you are the circle and time is in the middle so you can see the beginning, the middle, and the end all at the same time. I don't get that. I don't get how you can make the Holy Spirit turn into a billion different individuals and you got the Holy Ghost, I got the Holy Ghost, we all got the Holy Ghost, but it's one Holy Ghost. I don't get that type of stuff. But when I look at that type of stuff, I realize how ignorant I am. So I might want to trust God if he said, when you get up here, you will understand everything and you'll have fullness of joy. And he said, the remembrance of negative things will be no more. You won't even remember them. Somebody will bring up some of your friends in high school. Who is that? Don't you? No, I don't know who that is. The Bible tells you, you get a mind wipe. You see that in the movies. Okay, so, sow good seed, folk. You have to reap what you sow, whether you go to heaven or you go to hell. If you go to heaven, the negative things that you sold are taken away from your reward. Y'all got that? Well, you sold these things and you never got on top of them. You never asked us to forgive you. So, even though you got to go, you know, you got 300, put it in monetary terms, uh, you got $300 million sitting here, and now we got to deduct a million from that because of this thing you didn't repent of. And we got to deduct 10 million more from the 300 billion. Because of this that you never got on top of. And you were a Christian, but um, you murmured and complained too much, and so now we got to deduct another. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? So that's the profit and loss. That's why the Bible talks about the eternal reward system. But unfortunately, for those that go to hell, you just literally reap what you sow 
perpetually. So the person that went downstairs and saw Hitler, they said Hitler was the one that was responsible for killing those three million Jews. So he himself has to reap what he sold into each individual. So how person number one died, that's the way he has to die in hell. He has to suffer the pain and the anguish of it, and then he comes back to life. Then person number two, how they died, you got to repeat the same thing all and over again because in hell, you reap what you sow perpetually. I read one account of a person that for their entire life, they didn't do anything but just sat around. And guess what? This person said they were in hell in a cubicle, going insane, just sitting there and doing nothing. It's not what TV says. And uh, so, just pray. Pray for the nations. All of us should have a list of our family members. And I'm guilty of not doing this also. You should have a list of your family members that's not saved or the ones that's questionable. <laughs> you should be praying for them every day. And, and pray the prayer that, that Jesus prayed. He said, pray that laborers will be sent into the harvest. Lord, send somebody across the path of my cousin in order to minister to them. Because how many know, there's just some things you'll receive from a stranger, but you won't receive from a friend. And God in his mercy, he'll send a dog to preach you if that's what'll get you in. But one thing for sure, none of us will ever be, will ever have an excuse because God is making it plain. So, you know, and I had, you know, I was looking like, man, I, man, I had some good old stuff when it comes to peace. Good examples about the peace of God and don't get on the airplane because you don't have no peace on the inside and you're getting ready to go on vacation and you're getting ready to buy this car, but you don't have peace. Oh, man, I had a line up. And then the Holy Spirit said, boom, there is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. It's like, oh, man, you want me to preach on hell right in the midst of fruit? Yes, because there's too many people going. And as the Lord has me preach it, it's too many people that are in danger of going. There is no such thing as one saved, always saved. That's people who pervert scripture so they can have a license to sin. And that's a large part of the body of Christ right now that says you don't even have to read the Bible and you don't have to pray because everything is paid for. There are ma there's a major organization right now that's telling their people that if the mark of the beast comes, you can go ahead and take it in spite of what scripture says because God is love and he understands. I don't gamble like that. I gamble with some other stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I'm talking about like monetary, I'm just saying I take chances on stuff. I'm not taking chances on anything that God said. It's not going to happen. I don't want to take that chance because you only get one. And I'm not trying to mess that up. You understand what I'm saying? And I, that's one of the things that I've been doing. I've been trying to pretend like I am God and observe myself in planet Earth. And I don't like that. Because what we do, we do unconsciously. We murmur and we complain and we talk about people yeah. unconsciously. I was driving yesterday and, you know, I'm driving this way and the person turned out to do far. I said, look at this dumbbell junior. But it might be a wonderful grandmother that just got through praying in tongues for three. You know what I'm saying? And, and I don't. And so I, I, I put myself and God watching me driving down the street, causing one of his faithful queens, dumbbell junior. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's how you have to start judging yourself. You have to start judging yourself when you're mad at your spouse. Uh, maybe I need to just let that go. You know, they called me, you know, you know. So I don't, and this is where I close. Don't ride the line. <laughs> you out there with a pole over heaven and hell trying to do a balancing act. <laughs> And, and, and Satan on the ground blowing wind. <laughs> and the angel over here holding your dumb behind up because you want to take risk. If this is the edge of heaven and hell, you need to be somewhere way over here behind this. Y'all can't even see me. I'll fix that later. <laughs> I'm just y'all alive from a this is my mentality. 
Yo, I am not trying to take any chances whatsoever. I'm not playing with that. Do y'all agree with me? Yeah. <laughs> That's the Dracula music right there. Bingo. They tell you there's a bear in the neighborhood. Don't go looking for it. You should be hiding in your house with the doors locked because bears will come in your house and eat your food. They tell you they got a wolf, par a wolf problem at the park down the street. You know what? It's a nice day. We're going to go to the park and spider than wolves. Not me. I'm at home with the TV on, looking to see if you got, never mind. <laughs> Quit playing with Satan, folk. Quit taking those chances. Quit taking those chances. Live as far into the light as you can. As far into the light. It means you might get called out your name, called boring, whatever else. But I bet you you won't call me that when we stand before the Lord. Let's go ahead and stand. Mm. Good morning. So some of you might have heard this before, but the Lord just told me to, to share it again. Um, back in October of 2020, my uncle was murdered. <clears throat> and it was a shock. It was a shock to my family. He was a businessman, you know, owned his own company. Nobody could have foreseen what happened to him. And so what's funny is about three months before he was murdered, me and a couple of other women I pray with, we started going hard for him in prayer about his salvation. Um, I had been praying for my family for at this time, it's been 17 years now, <laughs> but at that time it was 15 years I had been praying for my family's salvation. And I had gotten a prophetic word from Lisa one day walking down the hallway. And I'm like, hi. She's like, the Lord said he heard your prayer. And he heard what you asked him that not one of your family members perish and go to hell. Now, that's the exact verbiage that I use. I said, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't care. But I ask God that not one of my family members leave this earth without knowing your son, Jesus Christ, as Savior, even if it's the last millisecond of their life, right? So my uncle, he is minding his business, gets a call about a towing job, which he normally doesn't do anymore. He owns the company. Somebody assassinated him as he's on that job. Now, what it appears to the family is that he's just gone. Nobody knows where he stood. The last weekend of his life, he partied it up. We're not going to sugarcoat it, was drinking, doing what he knew to do to bring his family together to have fun, right? So at his funeral, a man gets up. Now everybody is talking and doing all of this, but this man that he had known years ago, lived all the way in Texas, my uncle called this man two weeks before he died and said, I want to give my life back to God. I want to reconnect with God. Got saved, two weeks later, dead. Now, I believe that the Lord sent that man to that funeral so that I would know that he went to heaven. Now, the Lord had told me that, right? Because when this happened, of course, it's a shock to your system. This is a man that was a stand-in daddy to me. And so I'm like, Lord, how did this happen? I was praying for him, but did he go to heaven? And he said, yes, he's here with me. But me being who I am, I'm like, Lord, is that you? Or is that the desire of my own heart? Am I hearing the voice of my own desire? Is this you? If it is, I need you to confirm this for me. 
And that man was at that funeral and told about how my uncle contacted him and wanted to get back right with the Lord. He got saved. And so for the last two weeks of his life, the last two weeks of his life, he knew he did what he knew to do to bring his family together. So he might not have lived wholly on the outside. Nobody knew what had happened in his heart. But my uncle is in heaven. And you want to know why? I did not give up. I prayed. I warred for my family. And I still do to this day. So do not be selfish. Don't be so intrinsic and just think about what's going on in your own life for day to day. You need to be on your knees praying for your family members because the Lord will honor you. Now, he might not be able to force them to do what you want them to do, but he will honor your prayer, and he will give them the opportunity, and they don't know why they're making the change, but it will happen. So you do your part because hell is real and heaven is real, and we don't want anybody to perish just like our heavenly father doesn't. So you do your part. The Lord was not happy with some of you earlier today because of the selfishness, the laziness, tired. I can hear it. I'm ready to sit down. I'm ready to sit down. That's the attitude that you have when it comes to doing what God wants you to do, when it comes to our brothers and sisters in Christ on the other side of the world, but when it comes knocking at your door, what you going to want people to do for you? When death comes knocking to your family, where you want your family members to go, heaven or hell? When your family member's sick, what you want people to do for that family member? Pray or say, you know what, I'm ready to go to bed. I'm tired. It's not pleasing to God. It's appalling. So do your part. Get on your knees and pray because whether you know it or not, believe it or not, you have power. You have weight in the spiritual realm, and the Lord honors you. So do what it is that you are supposed to do, and you pray for your family members so they are not the ones that lose because of you. I'm not saying that it's all on your shoulders because they have a decision to make, but do your part. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. One thing I'll add is just be and always be sensitive when your family members are sick for whenever you get certain ones that are close to death. Always be sensitive because an instruction might be given. The girl here, her dad, her dad was on his deathbed, and Holy Spirit told her, go to the state that your dad is in and minister to him. She got at his deathbed and she she ministered to him, and she was able to get her father saved at the last minute, I think two days before he died. You know? And so, you know, he died and and, but she was able to lead him to Christ, and which means you should know how to do it. You should at least know how to do the prayer, you know. And, uh, and the Lord gave her a dream, I think, a couple of days later, or maybe the day before. And in the dream, she was going down an escalator. And all, all the rest of her family members were at the bottom of that escalator. And so she was traveling down the escalator to go and talk to them. And on her way down, the other side of the escalator was going up. And her dad was going past waving. So the Lord was confirming to her that your dad went up. Okay. So it's amazing. It's a, it's, it really is a war. And we don't know what's going on behind the scenes to try to get as many people as we can. So let's go ahead and lift our hands and give God thanks. Praise for his wonderful love and mercy and grace. Father, we bless and honor you. Thank you, Lord God, for having someone pray for us. Thank you, Lord God, for having someone stand in the gap for us, intercede for us, not give up on us when it looked like we were not interested in following you. Thank you for saving us, delivering us, setting us free. Glory and honor unto your holy name. Thank you, O Lord God. Do things a little bit different in the future, but... On this evening or this afternoon, excuse me, I'm going to lead everyone in a prayer for a moment. For you all that are following online, I'm going to do things a little bit easier so people can see scriptures and make the decision on their own and do videos tacked to the messages so that people can accept the Lord. But the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says salvation is a gift. You can't work for it. Can't even go to church or give money for it. 
okay? It must be accepted as a gift. And God says, if you ask me to forgive you, I'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness, and I will forgive you. I'll change you and write your name in the book of life. It's just a simple prayer. God made it so easy so that even a five-year-old child could pray the prayer if they wanted to, okay? And so when belief in your heart and saying it out of your mouth becomes a legal document in heaven, and then they write it down and they confirm it. So we're going to all repeat this prayer together, and if it's you for the first time online or someone here, if you've never prayed that prayer, you're not sure you're saved, you want to be sure that this is the prayer. So repeat it after me as well as listen to what you're saying and then mean it. Let's pray it together. Say, Father, I accept what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross, shedding his blood and paying the price for my sins and my life. So I accept what he did. I accept him as my Lord, my Savior, and my Redeemer. I repent of sin, and I thank you for forgiving me of it and cleansing me of it. Thank you for changing me, for cleansing me, making me right, and my name is in the book of life. Thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I thank you, O Lord, for anyone who has prayed that prayer for the first time or even second time. Thank you, Lord God, for doing what you said. You have changed them on the inside. They are new creatures. They are forgiven. They are cleansed, made right, and holy. Thank you, Lord God, that this is the beginning of the best part of their life. You will redeem them. You will restore to them things that they don't even know have been stolen. You will surround them with the right type of people, the right type of revelation. Grow them up and mature them. Keep us all safe, O oh Lord God, from the grapplings of the enemy. Thank you, Father, for the things that have been accomplished this morning, the things we have learned, things we have heard. As we've opened up this subject, O oh Lord God, thank you for giving us further wisdom and revelation. As the people read the book, for those that desire to read it, I pray that you would give them wisdom and understanding to help them understand the horrors of hell. Thank you, O oh Father God, for doing this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. I, I encourage you to get the book because I'm not going to be on the series for the entire month. But I encourage you to get it because it kind of deals not, it deals with really the psychological effect on you in hell. And, and all of these people are in these different environments. And even the devils were in the environment. And, and the people thought that it was a tree, but it was a devil using himself as a prop. Um, it's, 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 it's just very interesting. And the poetic way in which the demons would talk. And, and so, um, so I'm not going to get over other things, and I'll preach again. So I just encourage you to get it. It'll be a blessing to you. Only announcement I have, oh, just two, and that is we're just about there, y'all, with the front of this website and the house churches. They have the information now. We were creating a map system, so that should be up and running by the beginning of next week. Definitely be up and running by next weekend. And so then we'll start doing these things and, 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 and placing you at different places, and you'll You'll get a call or we'll make an announcement. It's going to be a real a big blessing to you. Um, also, my wife and I have to leave for Nigeria again in two weeks. And so, uh, so we'll be gone. Um, but uh, we leave on the 19th, which I think is a Saturday. And the 19th is a Saturday. We'll go on, be gone for that week, but I'll be back um, that Saturday and Sunday because we, we're going there. And then we're leaving back out on Friday. We drop down Saturday morning at 530 a.m. And so I'll be back in both uh, pulpits for that. Um, this one is a little bit different. This is called like a minister's conference slash sons of the prophet meeting where he pulls his sons together because he wants to talk to us. I'm quite interested in what he got to say. These African boys have been reserved for last, y'all. I'm telling you, the stuff that's coming out of their mouth, nobody in the planet is preaching this. They have been, and the Lord Holy Spirit told me that. He said, because I was... I, one of the things that I looked at was when it comes to all of these war, wars and all of this stuff, it's like the African nation has been, been spared from prosperity and has been spared for certain types of drama. And, uh, but that's something the Holy Spirit said. He said the African nation has been reserved for the last moment. He said because they're going to affect the whole world. I told you the first end up last and the last end up first. And you listen to what's coming out of these boys' mouth. I'm just like, this makes me feel like a peon. 
and how the Lord speaks to them about the nations. In many ways, he has used the African nations to actually fight the invisible wars, which were the most important ones. I mean, you know, over in the continent of Africa, them folk know how to pray. Listening to a teaching, he talking about you a punk unless you have unless you pray ten hours a day. Man, I'm not trying to hear all that. There is such thing as grace as God. I don't play that, you know, and and fasting for 17 years and breaking it with coconut juice. Man, I'm not trying to hear all that. You know, man, gee, you okay? Or uh, stop. You know, they talking about we're going hard in Jesus. No, you're not. Okay, don't turn this into works, but just I'm just saying. So, but uh, and then lastly, they can put up this graphic and they'll leave it up in regards to the event that they're having in April, um, which is on um, Good Friday. So they need light assistance, stagehands set up, breakdown. It's a worship and arts night on Good Friday. And so that's going to be a blessing. We'll be here to support that. They're working on that. It's going to be a great night, I am sure. So uh, besides that, let's lift our hands. They'll leave that graph up. And you can take a picture of those two phone numbers at the bottom that you can call if you have any questions. Amen. Amen again, <laughs> as they say. Okay, don't be calling me. <laughs> All right, Father, we thank you. I bless the people as they leave, O oh Lord God. May the grace of God be upon them in all of their endeavors. Let favor be upon them as a sword and a shield. Thank you, O oh Lord God, for keeping us in your perfect will until we come together again. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Give someone a hug. Tell them to have a blessed day. We'll see you on Wednesday night.